start up step by step. And uh, I'm sure yeah. when he joins us at 9.30, he'll have a thing or two to say about running a business in Portugal. You know, sometimes you hear it's easy. You can start a business up in 30 minutes um, if the wind is blowing in the right direction and you've stroked the lucky cockerel uh, for good luck. Uh, and then other people are saying it's, ta it's taking forever. And this is a nightmare running a business here in Portugal. I, I'm more at that end of the spectrum. It, it kind of depends, <laughs> which is a very Portuguese way of looking at things, isn't it? It depends. But you're definitely here and available to people to make it easier. Yeah. And we will talk about taking it step by step and, and a startup. Before we do, though, um, Raquel, things have changed a lot, I understand, in Portugal when it comes to starting and running a business. Um, before and just after the Carnation Revolution, the great political change in Portugal, um, being a business person, it wasn't looked on as the most prestigious or, or the, the highest beacon of humanity uh, to be. Right? <laughs> yes. We're coming from a, a tradition of where the business person is a little bit looked down upon. Is that correct? Well, yes. And you have to think about the context. So uh, in the political sense, everything that gave you a little bit of freedom was frowned upon because it made you less controllable, of course. Yeah. Uh, and so business owners had autonomy, had, uh, had capital freedom, let's say, so they could earn their own money. And that's a no-no for any autocratic state, correct? Because this is a way that uh, you can buy more stuff, you can, you can look at uh, uh, and have a new, a different reality. And um, back then, the political state was much, was a lot, uh, was really conservative and limiting, limiting to people, so they wouldn't, you know, want to look look into freedom rights, look into commercial rights, look into other countries, freedom rights, speech rights, et cetera, et cetera. So that was a way of controlling uh, the people. Uh, so anybody who had a, an activity that was uh, able to proportionate uh, freedom or more money uh, was frowned upon. And even if you did have some money, and, and also, you know, you have the the few families that owned everything co-helped by the state and the government and so forth. So of course you had all of that kind of stuff. Uh, so the, the, the capital power was in the hands of a very few. Uh, and that was the way to go if you want to control the majority of the people, right? Uh, and then even if you did have a little bit of money, there wasn't a lot to buy. There wasn't a lot of available to buy. We didn't even have Coca-Cola until, you know, 80s, the 80s. So even if you did have, uh, it, it was a very closed off country. So in, in, so imagine the leap, sometimes we don't think about this and it is incredible, the leap of development that we've made between the seventies and now. Uh, so I know it's 50 years, but Jesus, it's a completely different reality. It's it, and it is interesting to acknowledge and note that I think uh, that and, and it, yeah, fifty years does sound like a long time, which will of course will be celebrated next year, and this will be part of the <laughs> reflectiveness, I suppose, won't it, and contemplation of what's yeah. happened since then. But for a culture, for a country, fifty years isn't, and for human beings, it's, in not, the brand, it's not yeah. a long time, is it? And and this is not I suppose what we're talking about this morning is being part of that change uh, with how business is. Uh, seen and created and, and, it, and it's fascinating you say there that there were um, of course there were businesses human beings are essentially uh, um, trading creatures aren't we and the way exactly. that business operated before and around the time of the the revolution the carnation revolution and the and the transformation ever since is it, 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 am i right in thinking they were they were big and state approved businesses and their purpose oh, was to employ people and that of was course. perhaps the most uh, prestigious place to be in society, in Portuguese society. And this still runs on a little bit, doesn't it? Is to be uh, at the higher echelons as an employed person. That's the most kind. Of, that's the best, the sweet spot, is it, in Portuguese society? Yeah, uh, yeah. And we've talked about this, I think, last time, Carl. Is I'm 45, right? So I was born just after uh, the revolution. But the mindset of my parents was still that if you're employed, that's the best way to go. So my generation is not a typically business owner generation. My generation, the 40s, 40-somethings, 40 uh, 50s, are people that 
uh, are not very entrepreneurial-like, business-driven, because the way we were raised was you have to get inside a company, a big company, you have to get a job, a, a job a fixed like a contract, you have to get into the uh, boards of, of a company and then stay there you know, the, the most time that you can and have a safe salary. We talked about this. So yeah. at my age, I can tell you from all my friends, and I have a pretty extensive uh, group of friends, very, very few of them are business owners. Uh, very, very few of them. And this, uh, of course, comes from the fact that our parents lived through that, through that mindset. And then, of course, at the best interest or with the best interest uh, at heart for their kids, they're just ingrained uh, in our minds that the best thing was to be employed because it was a safe salary, because we could have a family and we could take care of ourselves. Whereas if you had a business, it was like, uh, 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 you know, savage. You don't know if you're going to eat the next day. Yeah. And of course, this takes time to deconstruct. Yeah, yeah, you know? and, we're, we're, and that's the process we're in at the moment. Because when I first arrived yeah. in Lisbon, uh, we're in Portugal, and I spent time in Lisbon. It was all about the um, these, you know, these co-working spaces and the startup culture. Um, yeah. It's it, 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 there is a transformation in progress, isn't there? And so, how how as somebody who's inside that, how would you, how would you see it? Is is the progress in the right direction, and is it is it working well for younger people? I think so. I mean, again, when you see the progress and the differences, it's a whole different planet. Uh, also, uh, and I keep saying this because I think it's very important. I, and I don't. There's a thing in 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 the um, law degree that it's like compared law. So I don't have a lot of compared law uh, uh, studies done to, you know, to know what the other realities are. But I do have testimonies about other people coming in from other countries. And as much as the Portuguese bureaucracy sometimes does drive you crazy, we do have a lot of systems. And I think I've posted about this the other day. I don't even know if it was on Facebook. But we do have some amazing incredible things that we've done uh like via verde and multibanco and yeah. all of the and the uh, empresa na water so all of these mechanisms and schemes that really contribute to a, a, a speedy uh tranquil relationship with the government when you're going to exchange your citizen card citizenship card or when to when you want to create a company or when you want to i mean i remember because of my experience and you know i know i, I keep saying that i'm 29 years old but i'm not <laughs> and i remember 20 years ago my nephews are trained to say that i'm 29 years old but anyways uh, i remember 20 years ago creating a company it was like had to go into an office with like old people in brown jackets and stamps and like, oh, this is very hard. This is a very complicated thing to do. And so it was like almost a cult science, you know, a cult because we really didn't know anything about it. And nowadays there's transparency. Uh, you do have to surround yourself with the right professionals. Of course, we've talked about this a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But if you do have the right professionals, we now have the conditions and the tools to make it stress-free. Uh, and of course, there are glitches. There are tricks that can really make it easy. Sometimes there's difficulties. I mean, I'm trying to create a company for a client now, and it's the third time that he chooses a name, and it gets uh, reserved by someone else. So sometimes we do have bad luck, you know. Yeah. But... Um, but it is systematically easy to create a company nowadays. Okay, brilliant. And we'll do, do, do a little bit of step-by-step -step on that. Um, and, uh, but I think the context is all important and, and, and you know, so people can understand why some of these processes are a little bit difficult. And I love that little vignette, yeah. that scene you describe starting a business. <laughs> it's almost like we've got, the, um, we've got the standing stones in. This is our question of the day. Mm. Uh, where, where are you going to find these? Um, and it's almost as if that's where you needed to go to start a business back in the day with some yeah. just to see if it's going to work out or not. Uh, that's starting a business. 
um, pre-1974 in Portugal, perhaps. They're only joking, only joking. Uh, <laughs> no offence, oh. and thank you. <laughs> thank you for your picture there. Ian. Oh, good morning, Alan Donovan. Um, que tal, amigo? And thank you, Alan, for defending uh, Good Morning Portugal on Spain Speaks when we had a bit of heat over there. Um, someone say, oh, that Good Morning Portugal show, it's only about people, um, expensive real estate in Portugal are for rich people. Um, we talk about everything and to everyone here on the Good Morning Portugal show. So cheers, Alan, uh, for, for um, standing up for us over there. And uh, hola uh, to you in Cadiz this morning. Uh, thank you for being here. First thing then, um, I, and I think you've made reference to this, Raquel. It's not for everyone, is it? I mean, whether or not the context and the culture is supportive to business, choosing to be a business person is no small undertaking. Um, it's gonna, it is going to mean a lot of hard work and dedication. And, you know, starting a business, big or small, is um, will require a lot of effort. So what would you say, first of all, about the attitude of the person entering into business here in Portugal? Resilience. And I think this is this is something to live. I mean, it's not just creating a business. Even if you're even if you have a job and you're inside a company, you still have to have resilience. And and uh, yesterday I was listening to a podcast and they sometimes you have to remind yourself about all of this stuff. And it's it was about mindfulness and all of that stuff. So it's it's such an incredible luck to to have this world to be alive the big bang i mean it was such a strange uh set of coincidences that made us be alive right now and made me be right. here right now and made you be there so and we all had have issues and we all have, all have troubles and everything but we really do have to look at life uh, with a little bit more uh, sense of humor and context and relative, relatively, relativity, relativity? Relativity. <laughs> yeah, relativity about what it means to be here. And 20 years from now, we'll not remember a single thing of the stresses that we are now facing. I mean, surely none of our daily stresses and, and struggles. So it, I would say go for it, uh, bear in mind that it's not like in anything in life. It's not a smooth ride. It will have its bumps. It will have its high and lows, its, its challenges. But if you do face those challenges as a way of growth, because you only do grow from your mistakes. So success is not, uh, it's not luck and it's not when everything goes okay. It's when you've, you've tried and tested so many times and you've persisted that you go ahead and, and, and overcome all of those obstacles. So success, so failure is an absolute part of success. And if you do have this in mind, you, you face all the challenges that come across in a different light. So you take them as lessons and you take them on board as positive things. Uh, and having said that, you know, just think, things through uh but don't be frozen by the prospect of fail okay it's not going to be the end of the world you will wake up the next day and if things don't turn out all right then, you know you'll you'll have another day so resilience grit and passion i think i love it the rgp rgp there. yeah <laughs> Uh, and yeah, and, and 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 yeah, I think um, we could say in one sense it's not for the faint-hearted, but it's also mm. a way of getting a stronger heart and and experience of life, isn't it? Is to enter into this. And of course, we, if we if we bear in mind our demographic for a moment, um, some people would would not have bothered to watch the show this morning because they think they don't want to start a business. Now, I think that there might be a lot of people who've retired to Portugal. And, and uh, me, when they first retired, they thought, that's it, I'm done with the office. Um, I've worked all my life. And they think to themselves, that's it, I'm just going to eat pastel donatas and play golf, drink gin and tonics and so on. But the sort Which of Which is people, fine. Nothing wrong, with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. However, uh, for the sort of people who have worked all their lives and run their own businesses, I'm sure once they've retired and come to Portugal, they get itchy. And um, mm -hmm. there is a there is a cream available for that. No, only kidding. Um, they uh, metaphorically itchy and think to themselves, oh, wow, I could start a business now. 
And it doesn't need to be an amazing, you know, world changing thing. But I've just got a little idea. And um, so I think there is a little bit of a curve of people who have written off ever working again. But once they get to Portugal and they've got all this experience of their lifetime and they're in a new culture and they've got a new lease of life, they think to themselves, I might have a little dabble. So that's for you, people in that condition as well, who want a little dabble. Is it worth having a little dabble? Do you have to start a massive corporation in order to have a dabble, or can you go about it in a different way? So let's bear that in mind as well, Raquel, for people who want Mm -hmm. a little, little, what's it called these days? A side hustle um, as well. So if if we can factor that into our conversation as well. First step then, this 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 perhaps this uh, retired business person thinks they want to start a business. Mm-hmm. You mentioned names um, and you mentioned registration. Yeah. You don't see the dusty old guys in brown jackets anymore. How do you begin? Well, first of all, let's let's take uh, even a step back. Uh, do you want to go about this alone? Do you want to have a partner? Because there are differences whether you want to have more than one person have a company or if you want to do it alone. Of course, there's, um, you can do it in, in both ways, with more than one person or alone. You can have a company and you're the sole shareholder of that company. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have one of those companies, for instance. So, uh, And what I do want to make clear here for, every, for expe- especially that kind of, 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 of person that you mentioned, Carl, is that, first of all, you don't need a lot of money that to, 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 to get put into to this business. So, um, but we'll get to that. The first thing that I would like everybody to consider is, do I want to go about it alone or do I want to do something with someone else? Let's imagine that you do want to proceed alone. You know, it's just something, a hobby of yours or whatever. So you want to proceed alone. That's fine. You can create a company. Uh, of which you are the sole shareholder of, so that's fine. So now you have to think about what amount of money you'll be putting in your your business. And this is the share capital. The share capital is the amount of money that is set aside for the company to start its activity, okay? There, the limits uh, for the share capital in Portugal, of course, in certain types of companies, but this one that we're talking about is one euro. So don't let that deter you from, you know, thinking, oh, I have to have a huge chunk of money to start my own company. You don't. Um, you, the limit is what you can have the share capital of one euro. Of course, I never advise anyone to create a company with one euro of share capital because right from the start, you will need to account for accountancy costs and, you know, setup costs and, you know, you, you can't start an activity with just, you know, magic. So uh, just set aside 500 euros, 1,000 euros, 200 euros, whatever you think it's, it's, it's okay to start with, and that's going to be your share capital. So you've defined the share capital. You've defined the type of company. Now you have to think of a name, okay? And uh, there's one important distinction that we should do here, which is, it's one thing to have the name of a company and it's another thing to have a brand. Yes. Uh, okay. And this is a very important distinction because the easiest and fastest way to create a company is to choose a pre-approved name. There's a list of pre-approved names that's uh, available, made available by the government. And if you choose one of those names, uh, you won't take the time for them to approve your own name. So that will cut like two or three days of the approval time. Okay. So don't worry too much about the name because then you can register a brand and that name of the brand is something that you really do have to be mindful of, uh, but you can register that to your company, okay? So let's set the example of Good Morning Portugal. You can have a company named Sardinhas en Lata, (laughs) Unipsoal Limitada, so LLC or whatever you want to call it. And then you, Carl, would register the name Good Morning Portugal Show onto your company, okay? So two different distinctions that I think it's important to, to set. And it is important, isn't it? Because um, they're, they're, in the way that um, I understand some people were cyber-squatting domains, when, when, the, when the domain name mm-hmm. thing first occurred, some very clever tech people thought, well, hold on, if I buy Coca-Cola.com, they're going to want to buy that off me. 
um, because yeah. they can't use it because I've got it. And this this happens with brands, doesn't it, in Portugal? Yeah. And I think this, this yeah. is going on at the moment, um, the, you know, where people have bought the registered the brand and it's the, it's someone else's brand, um, but they haven't registered it. So the newcomer can do that. And, and could stand yeah. to make a big, big, um, you know, killing off the company. They're holding it to ransom. They're cyber squatting in in, in mm -hmm. that way the way that people did with domains. So it is important in many ways, isn't it? If you do have a brand, um, to protect it yourself, to stop someone else coming in and blocking you effectively from using your own hard-earned social capital, business, you know, your your brand capital, if you like. Exactly, your goodwill. Yes, uh, and. Um... You, there are a number of ways. I mean, you can pre-register even before you create a company. Like if you have a great name that you really wanted your company to, to, to have that name, you can pre-register. Uh, and if you do pre-register, you uh, of course, you find out if it's available or not immediately. So you can adjust your expectations. You can adjust. You can have different ideas if what you want is not available. Uh, it's it's a, a pre-exercise that, that can be made. You can pre-register uh, and then you have three months to create a company. And of course, you can um, uh, extend that period for, for uh, another three months and so forth. So there are sites, government sites, where you can see the probability of getting approved, of your name getting approved based on the, the businesses that are currently open the similarities, so you can do these types of tests before you advance. And it's a, an important thing to do because it sets your expectation level, okay? Very good. And I think that's the right link for registering your brand. Yeah. If you're bringing one to, to Portugal, you go through the government department um, and register that. So thank you for that distinction um, between um, the, uh, but the brand itself and the trading name. And if you do choose one of the Portuguese uh, pre-approved names, there are some great names there, aren't there? Like the Pink Electric, <laughs> Pink Electric Flamingo Company, and some. Did they? Did they have some yeah. fun? Uh, did they have some fun thinking those? Up? <laughs> Probably, I would certainly. <laughs> I would certainly mess up a little bit with you know. I would go crazy a little bit with those names if I could. If I was the one what in charge, they were they were they anticipating a wave of exotic dance clubs opening up? <laughs> I never know. Right, okay. <laughs> right. Exotic um, flamingo. Yeah. So with them, um, oh, and also, but just to rewind a little bit, if you don't want to start a company, you can still trade on the green receipt system, which I think is one of those technologies oh, yeah. we referred to earlier on. So yes, you can. You can start a company and that's what you're talking about but you can also register your activity that's a key phrase here isn't it registering an activity yeah. that's what the Portuguese yes. call, registering an activity yes. now, you can go the company route which you've begun to talk about or you can use the online system through the finances portal and good luck with that it's not impossible but you, you will need some help with that and then you yeah. can just issue invoices um, to the people who you do work for and for the retired entrepreneur who might want to do a little bit of consulting that one might be the perfect option for them yeah for sure for sure uh, there's it's much simpler of course uh, it may be a better choice or not depending on the type of business depending on the type of costs of uh, of expenses that you might have because in that case you can the the system um, assumes that 25% of whatever you've made are costs that will be deducted to the profit. So you have 75% 75, 75 of, of profit. And when it, w with a company, you can deduct 100% of costs and more, of course. Uh, so uh -huh. we, we have to analyze the situation because creating a company does have accountancy costs every month. And when you open your activity in the finances, you can have you can opt for a simplified regime where you don't have to have an accountant. But then again, it can depend on the amount, and maybe some people are not uh, savvy with the VAT things and the IRS things. So maybe they will they should end up you know consulting someone, and you will have that cost. Everything can depend on the situation and the person and the activity. So what I recommend in this case is. Talk to someone, talk to a professional. They, you know, even in a half an hour consultation, they can just organize your ideas or, you know, have online courses like the ones that I have just to organize your ideas and to 
uh, look at uh, at the alternatives because then uh, specific things may you know turn the 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 balance to one way or the other depending on specific circumstances and you you. you you really should consult with someone and you're uh, one of those such person who people can consult with please of make course, sure of course of course contact details on the screen so maybe you can pop the best way of getting in touch with you in the private chat we've got um it's bring your parents to work day today bobby o'reilly's <laughs> joining us in a few minutes and he's brought his mum and dad who are in the country at the moment wow That's- it's great because they are seasoned business people as well. They're great entrepreneurs, started a business in the 80s, and it's still going, uh, Bobby tells me. So on, on this matter of what it takes to be a successful business person, which, of course, Bobby is, uh, it sounds like it comes through in the DNA of the O'Reilly family to be a successful business person. So we can find out a bit more about what it takes uh, from the O'Reillys when they join us in a few minutes. We've got a quick question. Actually, we had a, we've got an observation first, says Alan. As a former business owner, you can choose your own hours. You can choose it any 60 to 80 hours you like. That's a day sometimes, it feels like. Yeah. It? And yeah. question, um, what would be the setup cost for us? Uh, let's get down to nitty gritty then. What's the setup cost for sole proprietorship? And does it need a name like an LLC does? In my home country, the name of sole proprietorship is your very own name. So how would that transfer for Mehmet this morning? Well, first, setup costs for companies. Uh, 400 euros. It, it can depend whether you choose a Empresa na Hora or Empresa Online. Uh, just set your mind to 400 because it's 360 for the commercial registry and then uh, 40 for the beneficial ownership registration, which is mandatory. Okay, so it can be a little bit less than that depending on the system that you choose, but bear in mind as a rule of thumb the 400, okay, for incorporation. And then uh, social proprietorship is in your name. Yes, you can you can have it both ways. You can either use your own name, but it has to be it, it can't be like Raquel Unipsual. It has to be uh, it, identify yourself with your own name. It doesn't have to be your full name. I mean, my my mother has seven names, so of course it doesn't have to be all of those. Yes. <laughs> but it can be your name, or it can be uh, a different name. For instance, my my own company doesn't have my my name, uh, so you can choose also with the Unipsual so a sole proprietorship. You can choose a fantasy name, a made up name. For, for your company. You can go either way. Fantasy names. Okay. Maybe we should think a few yeah. of those up this morning as well while we're here. If you need <laughs> help, if you need help thinking of a name for your company, we've got some great minds here this morning, including the, the O'Reilly. So let's bring them on to the screen now. This is absolutely wonderful. Loving this. Let me just get that out of the way there. Good morning to you. Let me just put you on a better part of the screen as well. The O'Reilly's live with us from south of the river in Good morning, guys. Ooh. How are you? <laughs> Lovely to have you here. We've got uh, uh, Nora and Willie along with Bobby this morning. How's it going? How's he treating you? Very good. That's great here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great review, isn't it? That's TripAdvisor, five star there. Fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant. So what have you been up to? And are you enjoying your, your, your time here in Portugal? Yes. yes. We've been enjoying it. We've been getting about playing golf. Oh, lovely. Okay. Yeah. And on the Arawera, on the Arawera, uh, eight, well, they've got 36 holes altogether, haven't they, in Arawera? I don't know if you, 